Living seas, what picture does this phrase conjure up in your mind? A rocky reef bursting with brightly coloured fish, anemones and sponges, or a boat trip in the company of playful seals, or fishermen hauling nets brimming with big tasty fish. Living seas are all of these things, and more. Far from being grey and lifeless, the North Sea is actually home to a rich diversity of exciting marine life. Hidden below the surface, lies a patchwork of unique habitats that rival anything on land, from forests of kelp to vast sandy plains. The North Sea's marine life is waiting to be discovered. Thanks to the Great Northeastern Rocky Reef, the Northern North Sea is home to vast forests of kelp, large brown seaweeds that form the rainforests of the sea. These forests provide a unique habitat are home to many interesting species. While smaller fish use the kelp for cover, larger predatory fish come in here to feed, in turn attracting one of the UK's most charismatic mammals, the grey seal. These large mammals, reaching two metres in length, can be found all along the North Sea coast, and whilst their movements on land can appear awkward and sluggish, underwater seals almost glide, twisting and turning with graceful ease. Fish make up an important part of the seal's diet, with this wrasse appearing to be one of the lucky ones, escaping with only a nip fin. Crabs and starfish crawl through the forest floor in search of prey, while sea urchins graze on the seaweed, using their sharp, rasping teeth. Kelp attaches itself to rock using a holdfast, a kind of mass of branching rootlets. North Sea rocky reefs can rival any tropical coral reef for colour and richness of life. Dead man's fingers, it's a type of soft coral, thrive here, standing upright in the current. This beautiful plumose anemone attaches themselves firmly to the rock, favouring areas of strong flow. Here a constant supply of food drifts past and is easily plucked out of the water column. Crabs and lobster, the mainstay of many North Sea fisheries, also hide amongst the reefs, seeking shelter in caves and overhangs. What at first may appear as a beautiful flower is in fact a deadly predator, patiently lying in wait for passing prey. Related to jellyfish, all anemones have stinging cells situated on the end of the tentacles. It is these that help catch and paralyse unsuspecting small fish and prawns. Dahlia anemones seek out sandy seabeds or rocky crevices, carefully covering themselves in grains of sand and shell, so that when they close they are almost completely camouflaged. The aptly named elegant anemone comes in a variety of different colours and lives in vast colonies, covering the rocks in a carpet of colour. Its large size and brown colour makes the lion's mane jellyfish unmistakable. Their long stinging tentacles can trail for over three metres. And whilst these are actually used for capturing prey, small fish may actually use them for shelter, hiding away from large predators. The familiar mussel can form vast beds over the seafloor, seeking out areas of strong flow. Mussels are filter feeders, with each individual filtering out as much as 7.5 litres of seawater an hour. They feed on plankton and other little organisms, whilst they themselves are preyed upon by starfish and dog whelks. Another familiar shellfish is a scallop. They also live on the seafloor, but unlike mussels, they're highly mobile. When disturbed, scallops will rapidly open and close their shell, propelling themselves through the water and away from danger. Scallops have relatively complex eyes with a lens and a retina, and whilst they can't see shapes, they can detect light and motion. Yet another familiar mollusk is a common whelk, which can grow to over 10cm in length. 
They're both expert predators, feeding on worms and other shellfish, and voracious scavengers, feeding on a variety of dead and dying animals. You might not think it, but octopuses are also mollusks and related to slugs and snails. They hide amongst the rocky reefs and have an amazing ability to change their colour and pattern to suit the background. Octopuses also have excellent colour vision and eyes pretty similar to our own, despite evolving completely separately to us. Octopuses move around head first using their eight arms, the suckers that run along the length that allow the octopus to walk along the sea floor. If threatened, octopus can suck in water and then blow it out to propel them away from danger. One of our most familiar and valuable crustaceans is the common lobster. Their blue coloration and bright red antennae are unmistakable. They seek out crevices in rocky reefs and wrecks in which to hide. When hunting, lobsters will take both live and dead food. Their two large claws are specialised for feeding. One's thin, used for cutting, the other's broad, used for crushing. The familiar edible crab, or brown crab, is another one of the North Sea's extremely important commercial species. They can be distinguished by their brown-pink coloration and the pie-crust edging to their shell. They've also got black tips to their claws. Crabs can only mate when the female has molted and her shell becomes soft, and for this reason males often carry around a female until the time that she molts. Another commonly found crab is the velvet swimming crab. It's characterised by its piercing red eyes. That's why it's called the devil crab sometimes. These crabs have a ferocious reputation and will often rear up at inquisitive divers. Another familiar crab is the hermit crab. Find those in the rock pools. Because they've got a soft body, hermit crabs have to seek out their own armour. This is often in the form of a wink or whelk shell. As the crab grows, it has to move house. Here the hermit crabs are arguing over who gets the best shell. A close relative of the hermit crab, not as its name suggests, is the spiny squat lobster. This striking crustacean with its red body and electric blue markings lives amongst rocky reefs. It's often encountered by divers. The other North Sea speciality is spider crab. Some of the smaller species are very hard to spot, camouflaging themselves well amongst the seaweed. Echinoderms means spiny skinned, and this group of marine animals consists of sea urchins, sea cucumbers and starfish. The bloody henry starfish gets its name from its bright coloration, it can range from bright red through to orange and pink. Bloody henrys are suspension feeders using their arms to pluck food from the surrounding water. The aptly named sun star has 14 arms and can be found on rocky reefs throughout the North Sea. They vary greatly in colour, reds, pinks, oranges and yellows. As their name suggests, brittle stars have long brittle arms and form large mats on the seafloor. They too are suspension feeders, grabbing tiny morsels of food as it drifts past. The seven-armed starfish is a voracious predator and has a particular liking for other starfish. They can move surprisingly quickly using the hundreds of tube feet that run along each arm. The sea potato or heart urchin lives buried in the sand and can often be found washed up on beaches after strong storms. They're covered in a dense layer of spines giving them a kind of hairy appearance. It's these spines that help the sea potato bury itself in the sediment and evade would-be predators. The North Sea is home to over 230 different species of fish. Bright, colourful, drab, wonderful. These cuckoo wrasses are often encountered by divers over rocky reefs and both the males and the females appear completely different. The males are brightly coloured with orange, yellow and blue whilst the female is bright orange with three distinct circles on her back. And like all wrasses, cuckoo wrasses has the ability to change their sex. All are born female but only a number will go on to develop into males. The male cuckoo wrasse possess 
a harem of females, and if he dies, the dominant female goes about the transformation into a male and takes over the group. Balin rats are another familiar sight on the reef, often emerging from kelp forests to investigate approaching divers. Their marbled colouring and thick lips makes this species unmistakable. The seafloor is home to many perfectly adapted fish species, with the sandy coloured sand goby forming large shoals over soft sediments. Flat rocky reefs provide the perfect place in which to hide, with top knot able to alter their colour and pattern to camouflage themselves against the surrounding rock. Sea scorpions too can alter their colour to blend in with rocks and seaweed. The leopard spot goby is another North Sea species that would not look out of place on the tropical coral reef. It's highly territorial but very shy. Leopard spotted gobies, they're difficult to see and photograph, often retreating into cracks and crevices at the very slightest of disturbances. Found hanging in the midwater, unlike most of their relatives who favour the seabed, is the two spot goby. Close inspection of this small but rather inconspicuous species reveals its true beauty. During the breeding season, males are adorned with iridescent blue markings, while females are reddish brown. Both male and female have a large black spot at the base of their tail fin, while only the males have the second spot that gives the species its name. We've also got sharks in our coastal waters. One of the most familiar is the cat shark, Britain's smallest shark, used to be known as the dogfish. Commonly known as a mermaid's purse, this is in fact the egg case of a cat shark. Inside, a small fish is grown and will soon hatch out as a fully formed shark. Wolffish are usually found in deep, cold water, but in the rocky reefs of the North North Sea, they can be found pretty close inshore. Here they hide away in cracks and crevices, lying in wait for passing prey such as fish and crabs. One of the North Sea's more charismatic species is the lump sucker. These are bizarre looking fish coming in shore in springtime to breed. Whilst the females return immediately to deeper water, the males stay behind and guard the eggs for up to two months, ensuring they are not predated before they have the chance to hatch. The name lump sucker comes from the sticky sucker on the underside that allows the fish to attach firmly to the rocks. Just looking at a few puffins out there, here we are at um, Yorkshire Wildlife Trust Flamborough Cliffs Nature Reserve and we are surrounded by literally hundreds of thousands of seabirds and they're here for a reason. We have a wonderful cliffs that they're nesting on but more particularly that out there is a living sea, a sea that's full of the fish that they feed on and that's what the Wildlife Trust vision is all about. It's about a living sea that's thriving with wildlife. Living seas are vital. They support tens of thousands of plants and animals, extraordinary, colourful, wonderful wildlife. In fact, half of Britain's wildlife is actually out at sea, like the seabirds behind us. But they're not just vital for wildlife, they're vital for us. They are our life support systems, regulating the climate, absorbing greenhouse gases, producing the very oxygen we breathe. So it's vital that we protect and manage our seas better. Our seas need better protecting and after decades of campaigning the government passed the Marine and Coastal Access Act in 2009 and at the heart of this act is a requirement for the government to protect and designate a set of marine protected areas, a kind of network of nature reserves out at sea. But the key to that is getting enough of them, an ecologically coherent network to make a real and sustained difference. The Wildlife Trusts are campaigning to make sure that the government does protect our seas properly and designate that ecologically coherent network of marine protected areas. You can join that campaign. If you have access to a scale in front of you, sign that scale and put on one of these big plastic fish 
and we'll be sending hundreds of these fish down to Westminster to make our point very forcibly. If you haven't got a scale in front of you, go onto our website www.wildlifetrusts.org. Thank you.